What's going on everybody? Tyler here with your movie fix. We've got just a few news items to talk about today um, and this wonderful movie news drought that's been going on all year. Um, but let's get right to it. We've got Wonder Woman 1984 finally getting released. Um, there's a couple of little bits that come with this. There's some baggage with that story. Uh, and I also want to talk about these images that came out on November 17th for the Us United event that took place on Twitter and social media in general. So as far as we got for Wonder Woman 1984, um, this is a little shocking for, and it's shocking and it's not for, for two reasons. So everybody thought that we were going to be pushing that movie away from Christmas Day. They're going to push it back to summer of next year, something Warner Brothers is going to move. So in that regard, it is a little surprising that they're going ahead and just releasing it on Christmas Day because a lot of theaters are still closed, um, as well as they're going to be putting this out on HBO Max on the same day. Now, this is actually a pretty big deal because this is the largest, uh, most expensive movie that's gone straight to... Um, it's not even demand. This is straight to a streaming service. And they're they're kind of winning here in, in a couple of regards because Mulan came out with Disney Plus and was met with a lot of pushback, a lot of backlash for that $30 price tag, which I think was a little unwarranted. Um, it was a lot, but you did also own the movie, if I'm correct. You, you got $30 to see it early, and then you would also retain the digital rights to basically had that movie, but it didn't really matter because the movie is coming to Disney Plus, um, I think, next month as well. So Wonder Woman and Warner Brothers, they've kind of got that leg up with goodwill of releasing this major blockbuster onto a streaming service at no cost, uh, any extra cost other than the price of the HBO Max subscription. So is this as bad as it is for Warner Brothers, as good as it is for HBO Max? That's, uh, that's really the question here. So this is nothing but a win for HBO Max because they needed the content to draw in the subscribers. And just two days prior, we've got the announcement that HBO Max is finally coming to um, the Amazon Fire Stick or the, the Amazon Stick, their, their streaming platform, uh, their device. Um, you'll now be able to access HBO Max through the app, um, also through Amazon, I believe. And uh, Amazon Prime Video has about 50 million U.S. subscribers, give or take. And that's a pretty big deal. That, that opens up so much more access, so much more revenue um, for AT&T. And it turns out that they're also working on a deal with Roku. So if you do have a Roku device, they are working on that. Well, we just got news that they're trying to work out that deal because that's an extra 43 million subscribers. They, they need as much um, exposure as they can get. So, we've got Wonder Woman 1984 hitting that streaming service. Also going to be hitting the theaters on the same day. No movie has done this. We've gotten uh, movies like Bill and Ted and Trolls that went straight to um, video on demand. And they had a small theatrical release, but they didn't really see a lot of success with their theatrical release. Um, and more people gravitated towards um, the home uh, video rental if they could. And I don't think Milan really did all that well. And Tenet, it was kind of the sacrificial lamb from Warner Brothers. So, you know, that Christopher Nolan was was very adamant, you know, rightfully or not rightfully so. Um, I think he had every right to be pushing for that theatrical experience. But it very obviously just wasn't the time. So um, Tenet didn't do huge numbers at the at the international box office. So and, and they didn't do the the. HBO Max release. It's going to be coming out on Blu-ray home video um, sometime in December. So we'll see what happens there. But with Wonder Woman, they've got the goodwill of going straight to that service. And I don't know that this was so much Warner Brothers' decision because they can't just sit on the movie forever. That's not really an option. You, you can push things out so far, but they still borrowed that money to make the movie from somebody. They're still investors. Um, I know you guys probably have taken out some small loans, maybe car loans, home loan. You've dealt with, you know, thousands of dollars of interest. Try playing with $200 million on interest and sitting on a movie for two years because there is no, there's no window. Theaters are still closed down. We have no window of when normal, the normal theater going experience is going to resume. So they can't just indefinitely hold on to it. The movie was meant to come out in November, 
of last year, I want to say. It was supposed to come out November last year. And it was actually completed five months prior to that. So they've been sitting on this movie for like a year and a half already. And, you know, when were they ever going to get to it? They can't just sit on it forever. They gotta, they've got to do something to get more money generated. And going to HBO Max, hitting them with the Amazon Fire Stick, as well as possibly getting the Roku going, I think that's going to get them in the right direction and get them the exposure that they need. And, you know, honestly, side note, I think it's just awesome that, you know, Gal Gadot is pretty much the queen of, uh, of HBO Max right now, which she's the, the big driving subscriber factor between, hopefully, you know, 1984 and also Justice League. So what do you guys make of this with it going straight to uh, HBO Max? Do you think this is a good move? I do. I mean, I think that this is this is only good for HBO Max. I think AT&T kind of stepped in and said, hey, you've got this major movie. We've got this app. The app is going to make money, you know, indefinitely. And a lot of people say that, oh, people are just going to subscribe and then they're going to unsubscribe after they watch the movie. And I like to think of it as the gym membership payment model. You sign up, you get a gym membership. And a lot of these gyms make money off of people going for just a little bit. And then they stop going and they forget they're making that payment for a long time. And I I know I'm guilty of doing that with some of our streaming services. Netflix, we pay for it. You know, we've got it. Um, Amazon Prime, that's never going to go anywhere in our house. We're always going to have that. So we got access to Prime Video. Um, Netflix, but I probably watch two hours of Netflix content a month. Disney Plus, I almost never watch. Caitlin, my fiance, she watches that far more than I do. But, you know, I watch it pretty much only during Mandalorian season, which I'm loving, by the way. But I don't think the the whole subscriber thing is going to be an issue. They just need to get people's foot in the door to the service because, frankly, HBO Max is a really, really top-notch service, which I've spent more time on because their catalog of movies in general um, is just pretty great. They are lacking on some of the original Max content, but they have the entire HBO library and a lot of great movies on there. So they're kind of getting a lot of use out of me. And with 1984 coming out, I'll definitely be seeing it here at home in the home theater because I don't have any theaters close to me that are open. None of them are going to be showing it. So why are they really showing it in theaters? It's really a sign of... It's it's a gesture of goodwill because... Uh, they know they're not really going to generate any sort of large sum of money off of putting this in theaters. It's it's just not going to happen. So Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot, they released some statements on Twitter that I'm going to paraphrase as, Sorry it took so long. We're finally releasing the movie. We hope you guys enjoy it. And Patty mentioned that they're going to allow that theatrical experience for those who want it and those who have it. And if you can do it safely, then by all means go do it. So... They just wanted to provide people that option of the theatrical experience, but I don't see any reason why uh, Why not. You know, if it is safe, but again, there aren't really many theaters going around um, that are playing anything right now. So, will you guys be watching it at home? Will you be subscribing to HBO Max just for this? Is this something that's going to finally, you know, get you to, to go for it? We've had it for a while, but I'll be enjoying it from home, and that's going to be... Uh, an interesting experience for a movie that's going to be hitting theaters the same day. Is this the future? It's the future for now, um, for streaming. Like I said, there's no window on when normal is going to be. So we'll just have to see. Now, on to the Us United uh, images that were released. I mostly do want to talk about Steppenwolf and his uh, this new image, his original look. A new look at his original look which seems to be kind of a weird thing going around um, with, with articles saying, or look at the new Steppenwolf. This is, this is the original Steppenwolf. Don't, don't be fooled. Um, this is what it was supposed to be, uh, you know, four years ago. This is what it was created four years ago. This is the Steppenwolf that we saw in Batman v Superman. So we've got some images of Cyborg, Aquaman, the team in the Batcave. Uh, ben Affleck and Henry Cavill both dropped some images today. Um, and we've got some a cool little photo of Flash and Cyborg. So none of these are... Oh, and sorry, Deathstroke. Um, a couple of those were released today. None of them were super revealing, although I do like the, the Cyborg and Flash one. 
and just kind of showing them probably con- uh, going over their plan uh, for battle in the final act or going over the, the mother boxes, his own little history lesson, whatever that's going to be. Uh, Deathstroke with his uh, awesome apocalypse look, which I'm referring to the, of course, the nightmare timeline, which I'm saying that this is going to be the nightmare Deathstroke based on the hair. We we know in Zack's cut of the movie that he does have a different look in the main timeline of the film. So I think it's pretty likely that this is going to be the nightmare Deathstroke, which... You know, whatever. I'm digging the mohawk. It looks awesome. I hope uh, we get to see a tiny little sequence of Joe doing something awesome. Um, and then we've got this image of Ben. Uh, love that tactical suit. I find it interesting that we've got the red hue back again. I'm wondering if this is a different portion of the third act or if it's just light glare from all the lasers, parademons, all that good stuff. So, with all that said, um, Steppenwolf. I'm really digging this look. Um, it's important to, to know that, you know, Zack wasn't going, he never claimed to be going for super uber comic accuracy with the Apocalypteans, and we've already gotten an idea of what they're going to look like. He was going for a very alien look, which I think he has achieved here. Um, the, the, the spiky armor that he described as kind of a living material, it's, it's part of him, it reacts to him. Um, it'll react to his emotions, his actions, so it's not just, it's kind of this organic armor that's on him that's also kind of got like this chameleon factor kind of going on because it's so reflective to your surroundings. You know, it's a very intricate design, um, probably a major pain to animate and render, but I think a lot of people would love that challenge. And, you know, the, the head, which again, this isn't a helmet, that's his head. That's his big old alien head. And I'm really digging this look in general. What do you guys think about it? Would you have preferred, you know, this is something of a of a dead topic. Would you have preferred the Jack Kirby kind of look? I personally don't think that that fits into Zack's aesthetic really in any way or what this movie was doing. As far as Dark Side is concerned, you know, Dark Side looks um, just incredible. What we've gotten with Uxus. And um, we did get a small look at his uh, dark side on a t-shirt, which he's going to have the classic blue armor that's going to look somewhat reminiscent to what Steppenwolf and Desaad are wearing, but it's going to look very iconic in that dark side kind of way. So I think that's all we've got to talk about today. Um, I wish we had more. I've got a couple of videos planned for some other things to talk about, some other DCEU vids and some home theater vids and Stuff that you should be doing thanks to this wonderful lockdown. So what do you guys make of Wonder Woman 1984 making it on to HBO Max? And Steppenwolf's new look, do you dig it? His original look, do you dig it? Um, I'm just hoping to see see it in motion. We haven't really seen a lot of it moving, just really the shot of him coming down and landing in Themyscira. But I think, I think when people see this in motion, more people are going to get on board with it. But anyway, that's all I've got for today, guys. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos. I will see you on the next one.